All right, welcome back. So in here, we're going to learn about adding decimals. And the most important part about adding decimals is to line up the decimal points. To give us an example, especially in the real world, let's say you have 20 bucks, okay? And I'm gonna give you a dollar 75. So one and 75 cents. $1.75. When we add these two th things together, you line up the decimal points without even knowing it because you know you're going to have $21.75. If we were going to view this without the dollar signs where I say take 20 and add 1.75 to it, I want you in the back of your mind to think about it in the money sense because what you're going to visualize is you have 20 and no change plus 1 and 75 cents. What you instinctively do is you add up the decimal points, line up the decimal points, I'm sorry. Once you've done that, you add as normal. So zero plus five, seven plus zero, zero plus one, and two plus one. So you end up with 21.75 when we're just looking at the numbers. If we were to view it with the dollar signs, we would say you have $21 and 75 cents. So when we add fractions, we have to line up the decimal point. Of course, this gets a little bit confusing when our problems are long-winded. For example, let's add, well, let's give ourselves some crazy numbers. We have 193 plus 21.01 plus 3.2, and let's add one more in for good measure. Let's say 1.001. So I made a mess of things. The first thing I'm going to do, I'll start with the largest number, 193. Now, this is a whole number, so you might be saying there's no decimal point, but you can always fling a decimal point at the end of it and a bunch of zeros. Now, the next one we have is 21.01. So I want the decimal points to line up, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to make them as straight as possible. I have 21 and 100. Okay, well, I can fling in some zeros here if I want to make it look prettier to line it up. The next guy is 3.2, so I'll line them up. If you want to, you can fling a zero in, make it all pretty, but these decimal points all have to align. And last but not least, the horrible one, 1.001. 1 .001. Okay, so that one kind of ruined things. Let me fling in some more placeholders. Now, we have lined up everything, so we'll just add as usual. This little one kind of got shifted over, but you can kind of see where it is. So looking at only this column here, we got 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 0, 0 plus 2 plus 0 is still 2. Decimal points line up and add up all these digits. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus another 3, I'm sorry, plus another 1 is 8. I figured it out right, said it wrong, sorry about that. 9 plus 2 is 11, carry the 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So you end up with 218 and 211. And that's all we have to do. So we line up the decimal points. Now you're probably thinking, well, there's got to be something horrible to this. So let's see subtraction. Well, guess what? There's nothing horrible about it. When we subtract decimals, we line up the decimal points. So let's think about it in the money sense. Let's say you have 20 bucks and you go out and you spend $1.75 on one of those expensive vending machine drinks. And now you wanna know how much you have left. All right, well, when you calculate this, you know you're gonna end up with like 19 or something or 18, 25, I don't know what it is. You do this in your head and you figure it out because you're good with money, I'm not. What I'm going to do is line up my decimal points. I know this $20 has no change, so 0 .00. And I'm subtracting from it 1.75. The most critical point is that we line up the decimal points. So once they're lined up, now we'll subtract for usual means. Can't do 0 minus 5. Got to borrow. Oh, got to go all the way to the 20. Borrow one from him. Make that a 10. Still got to borrow. Borrow. And last but not least, we have now 10 minus 5, 9 minus 7, 9 minus 1, and 1 minus nothing. 
So we end up with $18.25. So this is the same deal, just have to line up the decimal points. And that's all for now.